Hello everyone, welcome back to Beauty Within. It's your favorite hosts, Ro and Felicia. Today we'll be taking a closer look at our lip color and how it can tell and show us clues about our internal health because as we know, a lot of what we see on the outside really stems from what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna be fun because in this episode we thought it would be really exciting to take you guys out of the studio and come with us to visit the Bite Beauty Lab here in New York City where we create our own custom lipstick and lip color that's catered to our own individual skin tone. All the different tones, textures, and shades can get really confusing because just like skincare, it adapts and suits each person differently. And we'll also go through some of the tips on how to maintain your lips so that they are oh so soft and healthy all year round, especially now that it's getting colder and cooler and our lips are probably one of the first areas on our face that are prone to dryness and irritation. If you're wondering about what ingredients in our lip care products work best for you, you can check out our first video on our lip care series. And then of course, we're gonna be sharing with you guys our own personal lip products and we're really into tints. Um, like moisturizing lip tints that are kind of like a subtle glow, but it isn't like in your face. All right, so let's look at the anatomy of our lips. Here's a quick refresher of pretty cool biological makeup and anatomy of our lips. So from the top, we have the philtrum, which is like the twin towers here, they're the two vertical peaks above your lip and it kind of leads up to the nose. And this part doesn't have any real purpose or function, but the quirky tidbit is that it helped our face merge together when we were still in the womb. And that was one of the like fun things we found out in the first video. Then you have the cupid's bow, which is the curve at the top of your lip. Once again, this part also doesn't really have any real purpose, but it helps create the shape of your lip. And in makeup, you often highlight this part to give the illusion that the lips are plump and full. And we also have the vermilion border, which is where the lip meets the rest of our face like a border and it surrounds the lip like all around the outside just like how our under eyes are made up of thin skin our lips are also made up of very thin skin and soft tissue and also blood vessels which is why we'll get into later that it's red what's also interesting is that the vermilion border is split up into two sections the wet and the dry the wet vermilion is the section that's closest to your mouth and naturally moistened due to your mouth salivary glands it's that like that's what the makes inside. the noise. And then there's the dry vermilion, which is the main part of our lips, what we kind of associate with our lips in the first place. And this is where you experience the dryness, the chapped feelings, because there aren't any oil, sweat, or salivary glands here like the rest of our face. So that means it can't naturally nourish itself on its own. So it's pretty much fending for itself in the cruel, cruel world, which is why there's so many lip care products. So that's the skin on our lips. Now moving on to the color. Color, 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 color. To explain it simply, the natural color we've got on our lips does differ from person to person, but it comes down to two things. It's the melanin that we talked about very recently because it has to do with hyperpigmentation and also the teeny tiny blood vessels that are residing right under the skin on our lips. And depending on these two things, as well as the health of our bodies, our lips can change color. We're able to see the tiny blood vessels called capillaries easier and lie close to the surface of our thin skin, which gives us the natural reddish color and this is pretty similar to the principle of our eye bags remember when we talked about like if you have dark purple eye bags it's because you can see the widening or the constricting of your little blood vessels peeping through the skin um, but obviously red eye bags is not what we want so it's a little bit different <laughs> so because we all have different kind of lip conditions lip color lip shape lip texture what's yours dry <laughs> dry like the rest of your skin yeah no, especially during winter, like right now, mm -hmm. it's not even winter yet, we're like transitioning into fall, slowly into yes. winter. They're already getting pretty dry. And then the lip color? Naturally, it's more of a pale pink. When my body's high in heat, they turn bright red. Like I can ah. feel it like pulsing because I, I can feel the heat in my body. Interesting. So mine's kind of the opposite of yours. It's like way darker. And I also have this like brown line that coats the top of the lip, which I like hated and concealed. I get like um, really cracked lips just between the dry and the wet vermilion. Oh, Do you get that? 
like it gets crusty all over. Oh, okay. I also have a really bad habit of biting my lips because they're so oh. dry and flaky. Like when I was little, I just walk around like. But the good thing is, the skin on the lip is probably one of the fastest regenerating areas of the face. So you'll find that if you do bite your lips, which is like a bad habit, you shouldn't do it, it'll very quickly recover. Yeah. If you're like, wait, but my lips aren't even pink, am I dysfunctional, am I dying? Well, no, not all of us have perfectly pink lips and that's completely natural. And especially if you're someone who has the darker skin tone, more tanned, more melanin, you'll often notice that your upper lip especially is partially darker than the bottom one. And while those with lighter skin types or skin tones have lighter lips, lip colors, it just kind of makes sense, yeah. How it works is our skin normally produces melanin to give us the complexion that we have, but the amount it produces depends on the skin type. So you'll see that darker skin tones produce more melanin, while lighter skin tones produce less. But unlike our skin, the lips don't produce as much melanin on their own, but you'll find that some of the pigment from the rest of our face often shows up or merges with the upper lip or the lips in general, like freckles. And some people don't even have a very distinctive lip border at all. It just kind of like gradients into it. So that's your lips on a normal day, but then there are times when your lip changes colors in a way you normally didn't notice before. That's when you need to take into mind that something might not be right with your health. Just a little disclaimer, this information is for general education purposes and we're not here to diagnose any health concerns. So if you think there is something like inherently wrong, just go to a doctor. So the first is like a bluish or purplish tinge. On a normal basis, your blood is bright red when there's a rich amount of oxygen supplying it, but if you notice your lips taking on a bluish or more purplish color, it could be a sign that your body has poor blood circulation. Poor blood circulation is also when we get really cold. Purplish lips because it's called vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, which means there's less blood pumping through your body because it's all going um, it's trying to protect to the organs. you. So then all the limbs and stuff, they also constrict in terms of blood, which is also why we kind of cramp sometimes. So fascinating. And then it also happens to the lips. And when we did some research into the traditional Chinese medicine approach, we found that blue lips can also signal that you're not eating enough or you're not moving around and getting enough, you know, of that blood moving throughout your body. And you're also feeling maybe extra fatigued. Because in addition to the shortage of oxygen in your system, traditional Chinese medicine believes that the body is creating stagnation or blockages throughout your system, which results in your body not circulating blood very well. You might notice swelling, inflammation, and even bloating in other areas of your body as well. That's why it's suggested that every day you should get at least 30 minutes of exercise or at least some sort of movement. It doesn't have to be like hardcore and yeah. strenuous. It's just like a walk or... Whatever. Some of the main causes for blue lips can also include anemia, which means that your blood has a really low level of iron, or if you're out in the cold, which actually leads to a condition called cyanosis, which is when you're on the brink of hypothermia and literally about to perish. Like in that movie when he's sitting out in the snow, he's like, nah. Th like that is <laughs> like what's movie? That, what's that movie? Um, Here's Johnny. The The Shining. The Shining. Yes. <laughs> so those are very extreme scenarios that hopefully none of us will have to face. Okay, another color that we might come across is white or pale looking lips. You know there's moments when something is wrong with your body and people see that your face is pale and ask if you're okay. It happens. It happens. And actually that reminds me, back in college, I think nude lips were a thing. Oh, yeah. And people would wear concealer as yes. lipstick or like just the completely wrong shade of nude. They were like, oh, nude! You know, go to Maybelline, go to the drugstore. Get any nude. Yeah, and then you look literally like you're gonna, like you haven't drank water in <laughs> weeks. Similar to the blue lips, white or pale lips can indicate that your circulatory system isn't functioning properly and your red blood cell count is low. On the surface, pale lips are usually associated with an equally pale looking face and perhaps even cold hands and feet. But for your body, pale lips can signal that your body is reacting from anemia, blood loss from heavy menstrual periods, low blood sugar, frostbite, and medication, or vitamin deficiencies like iron and vitamin B12. And with pale lips, there's also conditions affecting the rest of your body, like dry or really dehydrated, parched looking skin, as well as dizziness, and it really affects sleep, so insomnia. Blood has got to do so much with like acne and um, inflammation and all that as well, because that's what 
carries so much of your nutrients. Next is Windburned Lips. Now this doesn't lead the lips to change color, but it's worth putting in since we're approaching colder months and many of us are sensitive people and might be suffering from this. And when you see irritated, inflamed skin around your lips, like it creates this dry ring. No matter how much you slather on your lip balm, it never goes away and it's quite painful to the point where you can't even move it. If this is the case, then you might have something called perioral dermatitis or otherwise known as windburn. Epic chapped lips. Have you had this? All the time in the winter. The first time I think I had it was when I went skiing because you're exposed to the epic UV rays and you're licking your lips and then it just creates this epic dehydration and moisture evaporation on the lips. That's why lip balms have SPF. Yeah. And I don't think people really think too much about the lips. And SPF. I'm starting to get freckles on my lips, so I'm like, I need to SPF my lips. Mm, yeah. yeah. Keep in mind, most changes are temporary and will eventually revert to their normal color and health once you figure out what your body is trying to signal and tell you, mm. and you work at it to treat it. Mainly, the good thing is, it's just water, hydration, and nutrients. Yeah. yeah. And now that we understand a little more about the color and the texture and how this can be a good sign for our health, let's go into the fun part. So we went to Bite Beauty Lab in Soho in Manhattan to create our own custom lipsticks. And it's interesting because each person has very different skin tones and undertones, mm. cooler or warmer. So here's our adventure. <laughs> Hi, my name is Christina, and today we are at the Soho Lip Lab I Bite, and we're gonna be creating a bespoke lipstick shade. We're gonna be blending their colors completely from scratch and making it right in front for you to see. Felicia, what kind of color are we looking to do today? Um, okay, so I think like the warmer. Perfect, yeah, you yeah. have warmer undertones, so definitely a warmer shade will look great on you. Yeah. Um, if we're doing a My Lip But Better, do you wanna go full color or have a little bit more of a sheerness to the a shade? A little sheer. A little bit sheer? Yeah. Cool. So um, we have four different um, finish options. So we oh. have satin, matte, luminous, and sheer. Mm -hmm. So these are gonna be those finishes that we're choosing from, and they're gonna control the opacity and the texture of the actual color. Okay. And then we are going to um, use our shades to actually blend. Mm -hmm. So since we oh want Ooh, <laughs> a warmer. Like class. Yes, exactly. It's like the, yeah. like the so Ali satisfying. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> It's also like how they make um, that rolled ice cream. cream. <laughs> yeah. We get that a lot. So for people with warmer olive skin mm -hmm. tones, what should they stick to? What are the tips? I yeah. would go with something a little bit warmer that almost has like a coraliness to it Coral. or like a terracotta tone to it. Mm -hmm. It'll give you a little bit of a glow. Yeah. Especially with reds. Reds are so hard to find one yeah. that works. Yeah. <laughs> The cool thing is you can be light or fair or all the way to dark and you can have cool or warm undertones. So then she was saying like the orange terracottas, the warmer shades will suit, yeah, an olive warmer. Um, whereas for fairer, and you're kind of in the middle, you're not like green olive, yeah. you're, you're like warm. If you were looking for a red, blue toned reds. Cooler tones. Okay, so this yeah. is for you, dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me, so I have like warmer undertones. Now that we've chosen your shades, I have two more steps for you to think about. I have nine different flavors over here that you can open up and smell, mm -hmm. and you can add any one flavor to your lipstick. Okay. And then I also need you to think of a name up to seven letters, and we're going to engrave that into your cap for okay. you. And one thing that's worth noting is that because our lip color and our skin tone is so different, I remember one time an influencer was saying like, oh my God, MAC is discontinuing my favorite nude lipstick and yeah. I got it, I put it on and it was like this purplish nude yeah. that looked beautiful on her, but to me I looked like I was sick and dying. Like a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Rona, what kind of color are we looking to do today? Do you also want to go more natural? Similar, my lips are better, cool. maybe a little darker. A little bit darker and cooler than what we did, right? Yes. Cool. Um, do we also want to go a little bit more on the sheer side or yeah. do you like full color? Cool. So for people with cooler mm -hmm. undertones, what are good colors that'll complement their skin? Um, like more of a softer pink or uh, more towards a mauve. All right, cool. We are gonna mix this guy up for you. Mine's in our class. Yeah. <laughs> All right, perfect. I'm gonna have you blot your lips for me. We're gonna try this on. It's funny because like on a lighter skin tone and then on a different skin tone, mm -hmm. it looks so drastically different. Yes, yeah. Does it feel too pink? I like it. Okay. But I was thinking more of, I don't know. 
browny. A little more brown. So this is like one layer of, of the Luminous. If you were to layer it again, it would look darker if you want to see that first. So this is like one swipe and then... Perfect. Okay, so I've gone with Wildberry. So we melted this down and mixed it up. We're gonna pour this into the lipstick mold. And then we'll do the same. For a bite, all of our lipsticks are actually hand pulled. So we're gonna let this sit and cool for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And you really start understanding why there's 50 shades of Nude. Like if I wore her lipsticks, I would look dead. If you wore mine, they would look very cranberry. Yeah. Like very dark. So personalization and knowing what color matches your skin tone is very important. It's exactly like skincare. Okay, so we just put our personal favorite lip care products and lip color products here. So what do you look for when you, I don't know, go shopping for lip products? Moisturization and as long as it looks natural. So really like my lips but better type products. It's so like very sheer lip tints mostly or just very heavy duty like save my lips from the winter. <laughs> Dry lips, I feel like you should stay away from matte textures, but did you ever get into that? I like it after I exfoliate my lips, but if I don't, it just like, it sticks onto the flakes and yeah. you just see every single flake. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm they're all fluttering. So the colors that I tend to gravitate towards are more like peachy, light, pink. The undertone of my lips are already like quite pink. I just want to like accentuate it a little mm. and I find that it actually does make a really big difference. Yeah. It's like taking photos without, I was like, oh, it doesn't look bad. But when you take photos wearing some sort of tint, you're just like, I look alive. You look put together. <laughs> yeah. I think peach is a really great universal tone. Like whether you're tan, you're darker, you're fair, it's very girly. Mm. Because pinks, I feel like a little bit harder to find. And I have a pink here, so it'd be interesting to see you try it. So when you're younger, you try to conceal the darker, like the darkness, not darkness, but like oh, yeah. darker lip color. The darkness within. <laughs> no, no darkness within. Do you still do that? Or like, what do you do now? What do you look for? Yeah, I gave up on that because it's all about it's embracing. Beautiful. Yeah, no, I have friends who have that growing up and I was like, wow. My favorite of all time, are these lineage like water drop lip tints. Mm -hmm. I have a number one and number two. Number one is more of like a very sheer. Is there even color to that? There actually is. It makes a big difference. Interesting. You can't really see, but it, it makes a big difference on your like natural lip oh. color. And then number two is more of like a darker berry tone. So It'd be interesting like in the footage, we should yeah. both try it yes. and see how you can tell how different it looks. Cause if you have a darker lip tone, Cause even like on our fingers. Oh my God, yeah, you can see on her, it does stuff, but on me, it just looks like gloss. <laughs> Number one, I think, it smells like peaches. Mm. And then the other one smells like berries. So this is my favorite. And I feel like this is an amazing dupe for <laughs> this. Dior Attic Lip Glow in pink. So this is, it's very similar. It's a little more like peachy. Yeah. Pricing wise, I think this is. And they're both super hydrating. Oh yeah, and the the Dior one's a little darker, as you can see. Mmm, those are great every day in the handbag, in the bag. Don't even need a mirror, it just looks like you have life. Yeah. Because I grew up using just chapstick mm. or Burt's Bees, and those are great and they, I think they still But they rub great. off. They do, like you have to constantly, like like hourly, if not like yeah. every 30 minutes. Yeah. But now I think with these, it's you, it's like two in one. Well, actually you have one here that I have, but in a different shade. Yeah. Yours is... Delight. Yes. So this is the Pony Effect lip tint. Leah which... gifted it to me. Oh, really? Yeah. I um, fell in love. I bought every other shade. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my favorite one. 
because the texture and how velvety it is and how it stains your lip and stays for the whole day. Yes. It's more velvet than matte. Well, the thing is, I feel like it just doesn't have as much moisturizing qualities as yeah. that. It's I will just coat more it pigment. With this. Yeah. And it smells like watermelon. It's so good. It's really good. And I like using these, you know, the doe foot applicators and dabbing it on the inner portions of the lip and then kind of dabbing it outwards. So then you kind of get that like lollipop effect. I don't know where mine is. The thing with these lip products, they just scatter everywhere over different bags. And then like you get the bag one day and you're like, oh my okay, God. this this long lost yeah. friend who I've loved. <laughs> you can use the same application method for lipsticks. Instead of just going like that, which I think is too pigmented, um, you can dab a little bit and then push it in and then keep layering it on and push it in. Like skincare, <laughs> seven step lip care. <laughs> Another one is this YSL that I've had for infinity and beyond. Wow. They have so oh, many shades. I thought it was gonna be like bright fuchsia, but it's more like... No, it's exactly like the Laneige or the Dior. It's actually quite pigmented, yeah. um, pinky, but this is when I want a little bit more pop of God, color. so different. Right? Wow. So this one's really good, and I really love the YSL um, scent. I don't know what it is. They all have this scent. Ooh, it's like bubble gum. Kinda. Like a fruity. Yeah, like the fruity, tooty bubble gum. The texture is really good. So if you're into moisturizing, this is very moisturizing. Another tin is from Glossier. Ah, and this is their cloud paint. Try. Oh yeah? I've never tried anything from Glossier. Okay, so they have pretty nice neutral shades. And it looks really pigmented. Wow. Oh my gosh, it looks so much more berry on you. It kind of just looks... Not so berry on me. <laughs> Great description, Fel. <laughs> it's quite sheer. Um, sheer, yeah, yeah. It just depends on how pigmented you want. Oh, and you can put this on your face. Yes, you put it on your cheeks. It has to be able to fit the cheek color. Yeah. That's why I love the 3CE. Yes. Okay, so you have a few of these too. I have, I think, all of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're so good. But the thing is, this is definitely not moisturizing. No. It is matte as yes. anything. Yes. So make sure you put like a balm. Yeah before and I like doing it after too. But in terms of pigmentation, wow, so A good. little goes a long way. Yeah. The lips, it's a little too drying for me. But yeah. all their shades are so pretty. My favorite one's the pink one. I forgot what it's called, but it'll pop up. And then that one I feel like is the most universal color because mm. they have like a darker red, a darker berry, they have so many. and maybe a few more, yeah. yeah. But what to keep in mind is that this is very dry. Even if you don't use it for a while, like you have to warm it up with your hands. Yeah. And if you put it on your cheeks, I like to just like pat it here and then go in. Can make. You can get on Amazon, but this is from Japan. Um, this is like the creamier version of this. Is this more hydrating? Yeah. It Ooh. makes your lip look so nice and pouty. At the beginning, I was like, yo, this is red. And then when you put it on, it's so natural. It's like that healthy glow. I feel like sometimes like rocking a bold red lip takes courage, yeah. you know? So if you want to work your way up to it, trying like a sheer tint mm. would be a great foray. So moisturizing ones. Polish Choice Lip and Body Treatment Balm. This is like a balm. Mm. It's like a full on, like you need to work to get the balm out. I just put it on every night. And I think that's a great tip, putting on something very moisturizing every night before you go to bed. Yes. My aunt was like, oh, I leave this under my pillow. So whenever I go to sleep, I know I remember to put it on. And then the Savex original, this is what I grew up using. And for winter, it is a lifesaver, especially, you know how like you get very sniffly mm. and then around your nose, oh, it gets yeah. really dry. And then when your throat gets really dry and you feel like you can't breathe, oh. I put it around my nose or like even on airplane flights. Too. Wait, is it that mentholy minty yeah. thing? Slightly Slightly oh. mentholy and slightly minty. And I think the menthol helps you breathe. These are very nostalgic. They are. Like this pot and the smell and yes. the menthol has been around for years. Yeah, so this is like emergency. And then the last one would be the lip oil from Clarence. Dude, Clarence lip oils are in a league of their own. That is what I would go to Clarence for. Oh my goodness, the tangerine is so beautiful. The astounding thing is that although it's a lip oil, it's still the perfect pigment. Yeah. It almost looks like a gloss. And then it stains the lip when it dries, so it's like the best of everything. Yes, highly recommend the Clarence. There's also a bunch of shades from like berries to pinks to light. So for my moisturizing, 
I also wear it just before bed. That's probably the only time I'll ever go towards these things. So I have the go-to, uh, a super balm for lips and the two from Laneige. This is the pear and this is the grapefruit. So you can smell it, they smell phenomenal. So, but first, this is the go-to one and it's got ultra medical grade lanolin. So for the lips and the face, lanolin can be a comedogenic um, ingredient, but for me, I find that it's so soothing, so nourishing. But if you know that you're irritated by lanolin, like, Obviously, you can skip that. But it's also got a lot of great oils like evening primrose, vitamin E. It's also got um, apricot kernel oil, shea butter, jojoba oil, avocado oil, and it just smells all the go to. So amazing. Yeah, and it's all naturally scented from these oils, which I really love. This isn't hydrating enough for me. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. These are the lip glowy balms, and there's four different scents, yeah, flavors, whatever it is. And it's just very glowy. So it goes really nicely on top of lipstick by itself. So at the end of the day, I feel like it's really important to just hydrate yourself. Yeah. Like I can tell now that I'm more conscious about when I do drink water and when I don't. Yeah. If I go for like half a day without drinking water, I'm just like, <laughs> and then I keep like, my lips are even more dry because mm. I keep licking it. It's like everything is. Yeah. <laughs> so hydration is very important. Um, eating enough good foods, like whole foods, yeah. as well as sleep. I think sleep is also so important. Mm -hmm. So let us know if you have maybe any DIY methods. I've made my own lip balm before. Oh my gosh, I did. Let's try find like, footage? yes, <laughs> footage of that. It's quite easy. It worked wonders. I actually ended up using it for about a month and I was like, oh. Okay, I don't feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> this is too natural. <laughs> so yeah, if you're in New York City, let us know if you've ever made your own lipstick. We yeah. love customizing things and we thought it was really fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.